So look at it like this. God is, is taking you on a journey. And, and his design is that you discover a part of him that cannot be seen on top of the mountaintop, but only can be seen in the valley. And there's a part of him that only can be seen on top of the mountain that cannot be seen in the valley. So he got to take you to both spots to experience his fullness. Let's face it. There's problems in this world. And with news of negativity and fear at every turn, what are we to do? We need an injection of positivity. There's so much good that's happening. Join in the conversation as we discuss how we can be blessed and bless others, especially in troubling times. You see, edification is a team sport. On the surface, it may appear the church is divided and discouraged. We have a huge task, and it requires a team lift to build each other up and restore unity and hope to the church. Even Jesus needed help carrying his cross. You're not alone, and we're here to show you just that. All glory to God. This whole premise of this this discussion, this talk, is is to help put positivity back into into this world and back into the brotherhood, back into the church. So there are so many people that are struggling out there right now. There are so many different things, but but what what is some advice that you would give a struggling Christian right now in 2020? I would say this: don't first, don't give up. What I learn about life, if you look at in investment charts, and if, you, if you're into like financial things, this is some of the things I've started to learn about the natural laws of the universe and society. What goes up must come down, and what goes down must goes up. If you can understand that these are cycles, if you look at the children of Israel, at one point they was very high, then at one point they was very low. These are just natural cycles that human beings go through. So just understand that this is a cycle that everybody must go to the valley. If you're on the top of the mountain, sooner or later you're going to be taken to the valley. And if you're in the valley, sooner or later you got to go to the mountaintop. So look at it like this. God is, is taking you on a journey. And... And his design is that you discover a part of him that cannot be seen on top of the mountaintop, but only can be seen in the valley. And there's a part of him that only can be seen on top of the mountain that cannot be seen in the valley. So he got to take you to both spots to experience his fullness. So what I would say is learn to appreciate the all points. That's why the Bible said, be thankful in all things. What he's saying is that learn to appreciate God in the low moments, in the midpoint moments, and at the high moments. So I would encourage them to look for God in the low moments because he can be found. Like there's tools that are available to you in the valley that is not available to you on the mountaintop. You know, like, like he said, that his rod and his staff, they comfort us and like he lead us, you know, uh, in the valley. So that means that God is at, God is at his closest point to us when we're in the valley. Like people don't realize like he is the closest to us because he know that when you going through trouble, you need someone to be beside you. So he's there. He put his rod there to comfort you, his staff there. Like you can, can be you can find him easily when you're in the valley and so like what i tell people that's going through that is that just look for god he's near usually i look for him and guess what when you look and find him just hold on to him because he's just, he's just taking you on a journey and he wants you to to really appreciate him for who he really is and you cannot appreciate him unless you see all parts of him and that's all he's doing he's just letting you allow you to see him for who he really is and so just don't give up and, and start to enjoy like me i'm starting to enjoy the journey you know you know this one is saying I, I was telling brother carlos page is that when i begin to get on the mountaintop i say to god take me to the valley immediately <laughs> Because that's where growth, like that's where all the growth is found is in the valley. And guess what? That's when I know that he's the closest to me, you know, it's in the valley. You know, he, he, he's constantly, 
is trying to make because he knows that when he takes me in the valley, there's things, predators, you know, that that there's people and things that's trying to to prey on me. Well, God knows that he had to be there and he protected me. And he need for us to see that I'm protecting you in the valley. You know, and so I appreciate that that he's willing to think about this. Why would the God of the universe come with me through my valley? Like at my low point, he's willing to go through it with me. That's one of the most powerful things is that to know that he's willing to go into my experience with me. He don't have to. You know, he can send someone else, but he said, you know what? I want to be there for you, Adam, at your low point. And I'm going to hold your hand. I'm going to provide. I'm going to walk with you each step of the way. But the only thing that you have to do is that you have to recognize that I'm there and you have to find me. You, you, you know, you walking through there with your eyes closed. He's like, open your eyes and see the things that I'm doing for you. And he's always moving things. He's putting things in, in place for you. Like, like when you're at low points, God always find a way to put people in your life that's designed to help, you know, lead or carry you through that valley. But a lot of times we push ourselves away from them. It, as what, what happened is that we, we in turn start to push ourselves away from God. Because if you know how God moves and operate, he moves and operate through people. That's how he always been. You know, a lot of time people, you know, a lot of time God speaks or uses uses his power through people to get the message to whoever he wants. That's how he always, that's 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 just how he did it through the Bible. He, he, you know, he inspired men, they wrote it. So he spoke through them to get a message to us. And what I, I started to find uh, is that I'm starting to notice that man, why is this person called me? You know, that, you know, like you think about you, you know, like, how, you know, I haven't heard from him in months and then he got this great idea, you know, it, it, it is what God is saying. And then I, that's, that helps me to know like, okay, God, what, you know, I'm starting to listen to him and I'm starting to say, okay, what is it that I, I need to be doing? What I'm not doing? What do I need to be involved in? And God is saying, this is what you need to be involved in, you know? <laughs> so, so it, it, it's all these little things that God puts, you know, you know, I can explain. I don't know why you call, you know, but I believe that God, you know, is working things out for our good and saying that, okay, I, I, I know what you're weak at. So I'm going to put these people around you to get you involved in certain things that's going to avoid you from maybe some turmoil, you know, uh, that's down the road. I don't know but I trust God because he's leading the way he's leading me. And once I allow him to lead me, then guess what? Anytime someone comes to me about spiritual things, discussing spiritual things, that's God's leading, you know? So I tell those people, whoever is talking, talking to you about spiritual things, about encourage you into the Lord, listen, like, draw closer to them. Anybody that's, that's talking to you about worldly things and things that you should accomplish, run away immediately because that's the devil is trying to pull you from God now. He's trying to get you distracted in the valley for you to stay. God never intended for us to stay in the valley. If you've been, if you've been stuck in the valley, that means that you chose to stay there because all God is doing is leading you through it to go up to the mountain. You know, and so like all he's doing is leading you. But what I discover, Adam, is that each mountain, mountain that you that you cross, and every valley valley that you cross is actually getting higher, higher, and higher. So actually, you're taking a staircase to heaven. You know, really, because when when you think about all the the journey, the journey is to take you higher and higher. Each each adversity is going to be different from the from the next. So it's designed to push you to to, to height. See, the mountains get bigger and bigger because now your endurance is getting stronger and stronger. So God knows that he needs to give you a taller mountain than the, than the one before because you, you're getting stronger. He wants you to get stronger. So at the end of, the, in, end of your life, Adam, you're going to begin to look down on the top of the mountain and discover that I'm in heaven now. <laughs> I done made a journey all the way up by going through the valley, up the mountain, down, down the mountain, 
in the valley, up the mountain, and you're going to discover that I've been just making a gradual climb up to heaven, and I'm there now. And so I tell people, enjoy that journey, because that's the beauty of it. Like, Adam, I'm not going to lie to you, I, I no longer care about the destination anymore. All I care about is being with God at this moment. I just care about the journey, you know, and I'm loving God through the journey. And that's the most beautiful. When you can get to a point where you can love God in the midst of the journey and all through the journey, and you can thank him for everything that, that comes your way, and you're so thankful for the things that you're not even aware of that he saved you from. You know, the, the, the problem that he, 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 he didn't allow come your way, I begin to rejoice, you know, uh, him, and I begin to appreciate him even more. And I get excited for the mountain. I get excited for the valley. And, and so it's just a life of excitement for me because I'm going on a journey with the Lord. And so I, I tell people, just be excited about the, about, about the journey, you know, uh, just like my kids. They are excited when I take them somewhere. You know why? It's not about the destination where they're going. It's really about who I'm going with. I'm going with my daddy. You know, my daddy is taking me somewhere. So that's how I look at my father. My heavenly father is taking me somewhere. So I'm excited. I don't care where you take me to. As long as I'm with him, that's all I care about. Amen. Amen. So I know we got times when we go up to those mountains and down to those valleys. Mm -hmm. And when we were in those valleys of, of, of overwhelmingness and, and it, when we're unfocused, like w when you get there, when you feel overwhelmed or when you feel unfocused and you you lost your focus temporarily, w what do you do? Um, I, immediately I go, uh, one, I go to meditation. That's the first source, meditating and prayer. But the second is I go to the brethren, right? There's nothing sparks jumps you off you think about it as you like a battery and your battery has died and look at as your brethren as they are some brothers are jumper cables right and then other brothers are like another battery and so you got to connect yourself to them and, and get a recharge you know to help jump your battery back off again and so like what I realized is that man, I just need to get closer to the brethren. I need to be around them right now because I'm at a low point and I express that. Like that that's that's beauty in being honest with where you are with the brethren because when you're honest with them, man, you're gonna see you're gonna see a level of uh rallyness around you that you're gonna be like, man, I like this. It's like, it's gonna recharge you, you know? Like, you, you're gonna find that, man, so many people is, you, you're gonna be like, man, I didn't know that this person was rooting for me, you know what I'm saying? You know, I didn't know this person really cared about me. And you're gonna see that so many people care about your spiritual life more than you know when you're gonna find yourself down. And when you tell them like, brother, I'm just, I'm at a low point. I, can, I find myself not able to read. I find myself not able to pray as much. I find myself trying to, wanting, wanting to get involved in things I don't. I'm starting to get distracted. But I don't know what to do. And man, you're going to see, you know, the brethren, like, come out of the woodworks to just help, you know, to, to call you and, and give you that attention that you really need. Because what happens is, is that you kind of ran out of love, really. And because you have a deficit now you're feeling low you know and you you about to run out of gas so you need the brother to refill your tank so now they pouring in love into you now now that flow because a lot of time when you get into what we're doing we, we're constantly giving pouring out but like you taught me in a class is that somebody got to throw the rope back in order for the bun to be strong so in other words, that's why God put this design the church the way he did, because we're always pouring out, but God expects for things to be poured back into us, because if not, then that's, that's where the low moments, because we start to feel like I'm the only one doing anything. I'm the only one trying to do this. I'm the only, you start to feel like that. But if you let the brother know, like, man, I'm starting to feel like this, and you're going to see that love sort of pour in, and you're going to start to feel better. You're going to start to get energized again, and it's going to be just what you need. 
you know, and so that's point number two. Point number one, meditation and prayer. Point number two, go to the brethren. Point number three, I receive all the love. I don't say, no, don't do this. And that's another thing. We got to learn how to receive. And that's what, yes. that was a problem with me is that I didn't know how to receive. And, and what I was doing is I was hurting myself and others by not receiving their love because I always want to uh, do it. I, I always want to be the one to do it. But then I started to realize what is the motivation is that it, it was from a prideful position. You know, see, see, when you don't have pride, so you had to be humble to receive. You can be prideful to give because that give, giving kind of strokes your, strokes your ego. So by by giving and receiving helps balance you out and keeps you humble. You know what I'm saying? And by asking for helps makes you humble because if you're always serving people, now you 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 like man, you know I'm serving everybody. You know I'm the standard. You should listen to me. But now when you're at a low point, now God forces you to have to listen to others and have to receive from others. Now that kind of obeys you. So I think God did that by design that it humbles us to, to not get so hot, so high minded of ourselves that we're doing so much that now we need to be uh, receiving now. And it, it doesn't, sometimes it, for me, it doesn't feel good to actually have to ask for help to actually have to receive help from brother. It doesn't feel good. And, and I had to realize like, why? Then when I started to investigate why, I'm like, oh, I see why it doesn't feel good. You know, I'm like, okay. So even at that, it helps me to adjust and to abase myself and to get myself back. And see, that's one of those, you know, internal things that can be there, but you don't know it's there until you're in that moment. See, when you when God depletes that love, you know, that you've been giving out, now you're empty and need for it to be pulled back into. Now you're able to see like, okay, what's the motivation for why you've been doing these things now? And so if you don't get refilled from your brother, if you don't let them know what's going on, then guess what? You're going to die. And a lot of time we, we're just sitting there on the side of the road. Our car is dead because we refuse to ask for help. You know, and so now when we was making a lot of progress, we're not making no progress at all. And so now I'm starting to realize, like, if I want to continue to go down the road, I got to I got to ask for help. I got to tell the brother what I need and allow them to give it to me. And then the last I'm thankful for when they give it to and, and I let it's very important to let the brother know what their love did for you. I let them know, like, man, this, if it wasn't for you, you doing this, this is where I would have been heading to. And by being honest with them, it, it helps the brother to know that, man, I, I need to be doing this more often. So what you're going to have is that you're going to constantly having people giving and receiving, giving and receiving. You're going to have an ebb and flow. Like, it, it's not going to be like people going to see like, oh, man, I didn't realize that me giving to you like that made that big of an impact. It's like, yes, it made a huge impact. And a lot of times that can be the spark that a brother need to hear to say, OK, I didn't I didn't know it meant that much to you. It, it, it makes them want to work even harder to make sure that they're giving now. And so now sparks is just flying all, all, all over the charts now. You know, everybody is firing off because they feel good for giving to you. You felt good for receiving, and they know how much it meant to you, and, and, and you know how much it meant to you, uh, meant from them. And now it's it, it's an amazing atmosphere now, you know. And so when when it's their time, it's like you can't wait to get in line to serve them when they're at a low low moment, you know. Like you can't wait to be there for them because you was there for me, you know. And that's that's the beauty of brotherhood, you know, and sisterhood, the brethren, you know, there, that, 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 that's, you know, that kingdom nature, you know, the family now, that, that it's just, it's just a beautiful thing, you know. Yes, that's, that's amazing. I, I really appreciate those, those points there. Uh, one last question for you, brother Isaac. So what is the best thing that we have going on for us in the church that we're not taking advantage of or that we're underutilizing? The pandemic. Like, <laughs> like we're not even using it to, and I believe that God allows it to really show the real from the fake and see who is willing to, who is really spiritually minded and who's really not. And you're going to 
come to discover that some people that you thought that that may preach the greatest lesson are not as spiritually minded as you thought. And there's nothing wrong with that because we're all in the same boat. But now it, it allows you to address things moving forward. Now, now you see where everybody is weak at. So I think that this is a this pandemic allow, you know, you know, like people like, man, the government, you know, said this. It's like <clears throat> you have a great divide. And now you see where people fears are. You know, and then now it's just it's just a matter of helping people overcoming their fears now. So I, I think that this this COVID has been a great tool, you know, that we haven't used enough to really build strong characters, uh, strong faith. Like this, this is something to you. Like there's a lot of message that is parallel to the pandemic that we're not we're not using to actually show like David and Goliath, like like Gideon, like when they went into the to the land of Canaan, you know, uh, and they had to fight and, 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 and to destroy all those tribes. Like, think of that like a pandemic. Like the people were afraid. They like, man, they are giants, you know. They, you know, a lot of people view this this, this pandemic as a giant. Like, man, it's, we can't do anything about it. It's so viral. But we can, we can do something about it. And it's, we gotta use, we gotta show people the weapons that we actually have. So this COVID was designed for God to show the power that we really have if we use it and the tools that are available that we didn't know that was there. And we, and, and we haven't been practicing with these tools that is available to us. You know, so now it allows us to practice like what we're doing now with zoom and podcast see these are tools that was already available but we just haven't been using them that we can that that, that we have in our in in, in our uh possession that guys like why are you not using it <laughs> you know you got facebook you you got instagram you got all these things that you're not even using you know uh to to your full of potential and these are weapons that i i have armed you with so a lot of time the pandemic forces us to go into our bag and, 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 and uh, use different weapons, you know, um, to fight the enemy, because that's, that's the whole purpose of fighting the enemy and, 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 and protecting uh, the soldiers that, that, that are in the, the army of the Lord, you know, so. Man, man, powerful. There's so many things that we can be talking about, just, just that one, one topic mm -hmm. right there, and we're going to have to do that most certainly. Isaac, brother, I can't thank you enough for taking some time and, and talking to me about spiritual things. Mm -hmm. You know, we need so much more of this in the brotherhood. We need so much more uh, uh, of our brethren focus on each other. You know, so many times we're focused outward, you know, we're focused, which is important. You know, we need to, we need, there's so many people that are in the dark lost, but mm -hmm. we have so many of our own brethren who, whose flashlights are flickering out. And they're mm -hmm. in the dark and, and we thought they were behind us and they're lost somewhere. Mm -hmm. and, and so, so for those brethren who are, who are, are, are struggling, who need some encouraging news and need some encouraging things, I encourage you to, to check out these, these episodes where there's more to come. Isaac, I, I hope and pray that you'll be back with me. We can talk about some more things because I, I know it, it's like this every time we talk on the phone. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, hey, what, one question, man. What, what, what is a uh, uh, a memory of yours uh, that you and I, or either the family and ours, had? You know, when we was down there, is, is it is it one um, particular memory of yours that 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 you shared that we share together? You know, uh, that you value uh, that uh, of our uh, encounter or, or being with each other there on the coast. Well, I wouldn't, I, I would have to really think about that hard to, to get a one thing, but, but there is, brother, there are so many things that I, that you've said that have stuck with me. And, and it's just, there's, there's so many things, just, just all the time that we spend together, that we spend together as, as brothers. You know, we, I remember one time, this, this will be the one, this will be the one. I was, 
I was having some financial issues and I, and I said to you, Isaac, you know, I, I know you, uh, you, you're in a, in a place where, you know, at least from the outside, you know, that, that you're self-employed, that you're doing these things and I'm struggling with debt. I'm struggling with, with, uh, my finances and can, what, what can, what advice can you give me? And you said, I'll, I'll be right over. And you came over, I don't know how late you stayed, probably 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and we just talked. We talked about finances, we talked about spiritual things, we talked about everything. And, and, and uh, I don't know exactly anything that, 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 that are, that's memorable as far as the, you know, the words, the impact there, but, but it was just that, that you took the time to do that. You, know, you, you, you were always there sharing with me. You know, I feel like I was part of your family growing up from all the things you shared with me about your father, about your mother, all the things that you learned uh, growing up and that you've internalized to the point where you can give those messages to others. And, and, it's, and it's not just um, uh, speeches or sermons or any of those things, but it's, it's a little, little gifts of nuggets. Here you go. Here you go. Take that with you. And, and I, I carry a lot of those with me. I carry a lot of those with me. And, and I appreciate you so much, brother. I appreciate the, the love that you've always showed to me and, and just your example, just, just even, even when, when you weren't necessarily practicing the things that you were, you were talking, you were always striving to get there. And you always kept telling yourself these things because they were true, they were true. And we can't always practice and we, we fall from time to time. And that's one thing that I really appreciate from, from you is that, that you always stood by those things. Even when you fell from them, you always came back to them. And, mm -hmm. and that's something that's so encouraging to me because we, we all trip and fall. I trip and fall so much. And I can remember things that you said. I can remember things that we've, we've internalized from truth, from the Bible, and that we can always return to. And, and I just see from, from you and your, the, the way you look at your father, the way you look at your, your, your brothers, your, your brother and, and, and just, just uh, Morris Road and, and the congregation, I use those as, as examples, as, as encouragement to me, kind of how I want my children to look at me, how I want my, my church family to look, to look at me. And I try to begin with that in, in mind. Man, amazing. That's amazing. And, and that's one of the things I want people to, to see that a lot of time they don't know how to to have that relationship, you know, a close brother uh, relationship in, in Christ. And notice what you said is that it first started with a physical question, but then it led to spiritual, you know, uh, 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 things, you know, at, in the midst of, of a physical question, you know. And so that's that's one of the things that, that I want people to see is that, that, you don't have to go to, you know, all these secular, you know, things. You you actually have people in the brotherhood that can help you with physical and spiritual. So you, it's like you get you kill two birds with one stone, you know. And uh and and I I just want people to understand that that if you're not willing, like I want you to think about this. Like there's been several times that I, I I've been over your house at two, three o'clock in the morning, you know, more than two times. I know I can't remember exact. And same thing with Steve. Um, and that's a test that that should be a test for you to say, if I haven't, if I haven't been over my brother's house, then that means that I that there's there's something that's missing, you know, in the relationship now. And what we should be doing is finding out ways how can we spend that time together you know the where majority of my time is spent with the brethren versus with the people in the world you know right. and that's that that's another thing that i wanted to to really make a big you know effort is that i want the brethren to have majority of my time and majority of my time and service goes to the brethren because you know, the Bible said do good unto all people, but especially the household of, of faith. So in times like this, in COVID time, this is time where we we should be spending more time together now, you know. And and, and I, I believe that what happened is we will begin to show the power of the Lord. Because 
we'll be able to say, man, we've been together all this time. We haven't caught COVID. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like our love is so strong that it supersedes COVID. And, and that's a message. Can you think, can you imagine that what kind of message that was sent to the world? That what type of people are these that they're not even afraid of COVID, that they're still getting together? That's 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 a love that the world haven't even known or seen yet, you know, or experienced. I would say that they, they haven't experienced it yet. And so they're looking for that type of love and to see you guys as a light to say, man, we love each other in the midst of a pandemic, not in the midst of a pandemic. And, and you're going to see that, like, to me personally, Adam, to die for being with the brother is 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 more better than to die, you know, eighty years from now outside of the body. Yeah, I, yeah, I social distance. I didn't get COVID, but now I end up wavering away because I allow COVID to keep me away from my brother. So I avoided COVID, but I, I forfeit my soul. I would I would rather forfeit my life to ensure my soul by being with you guys than to social distance from you guys. And I believe that that's a, that's a tool for, of the devil that he's trying to pull us apart. And so I want to be close to you. And it's not, 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 I'm telling you, it's nothing better than to die with the people that you love, your brothers. You know, I, 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 want, I want the world to know that, man, Isaac died by worshiping with his brother. He refused to, to not, you know, not, not be with them. And that is love. That that would say that man, he really loved the brother. He loved them. That he loved them so much that he was willing to forfeit his own life on their behalf because he just he couldn't do without them. You know, and that's I think that once we start to do that, we're gonna see that the world is gonna start to change because they're yearning for that, you know, they're looking for that. And so I I appreciate you for sharing that and I appreciate, you know, this conversation. And the last thing I just want to leave them on is that, you know, I want the world, I want fallen Christians to understand that people like you, people like myself, if you fallen, we always going to be there to accept you. And we, we, we won't open on for you to come back. Like even, like, even like you said, even, even when, even when I haven't done the things that I should do, you still love me. Even when you haven't done things that you should do, I still love you. And I think sometimes people allow the devil to think that Adam is not going to love me anymore if he know this. No, actually, Adam is going to love you even more because Adam is probably going to say that had I loved you more, maybe I could have avoided that. And a lot of times we never discuss that with fallen brothers that, look, we we actually begin to blame ourselves for your for you falling sometimes. We begin to wonder what could I have done, like what could I have done better to 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 uh, to keep you from falling. And, and a lot of time, a lot of brethren that fall away never know that we actually feel that way about them. And I want them to know is that if you falling away, every I believe that a majority of the brethren is thinking of ways what could I have done to help you not fall. And they are yearning for you to be back. They they'll forgive you or whatever because they know they have fallen. And so, don't allow Satan to put in your mind to keep you away. Get back there, and you're gonna see that they they miss you, they love you, they want you back. You know, uh, it's nothing better than you being in the fold. You know, so that's the, I I just want to encourage them because I know I know what that felt feel like that you thinking that the brother is not gonna accept you because of something that you've done. But, but you are a living testimony, man. You, you don't care about that. You care about the soul. As long as you are in good graces, that's, that's all I care about, you know. And that's that's the love that covers a multitude of sin. And thank you so much, Isaac. I really appreciate it. And, and Lord willing, we'll be able to get together sometime real soon. Yes, sir. Arise and fears dismay, though some may dwell where these abound. My prayer, my aim is higher ground for 